expert advice. Today at expert advice, we are all are feeling very colorful. Any guesses why? Let me tell you. Today we have with us Sapna Srivastava, who is the managing editor of Buildotech magazine, and she is with us to talk about the color trends for interiors in 2015. Now let's welcome our very special guest first of all. Hello, Sapna. Welcome to the show. Hello, Pooja. Uh, Sapna. First of all, I would like to know how colorful are you feeling today? Uh, in India, generally people play very safe with colors. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen uh, people using mostly neutral colors, creams and beiges in their houses. Right. Uh, things are changing, uh, but still, uh, two mistakes that I've seen when people paint their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, one is either they will uh, use neutral color all over in their entire okay. house, okay. which makes it very monotonous and uh, mm -hmm. boring. Or uh, they would paint each and every room in a different color. What happens is then uh, there is no unity in space. Uh, every room is a different color and uh, uh, it becomes very uh, unbalanced and uncohesive. Mm. Uh, the right way to go about is that uh, uh, we can have one single neutral color which runs across all the walls in the house. And in each room, you can have an accent wall. Uh, if you want to have a master bedroom, you can do one accent wall in a uh, red color or a pink color and have accessories like curtains mm -hmm. and your bedding is matching it. Uh, in kids' room, you can have one color uh, like, wall, uh, like blue on the walls and have accessories matching it. Similarly, in a guest room, you can have a different color palette. But one color which runs all across all the rooms uh, will bind the whole house together and will bind Correct. the whole space together. Uh, so that's one way to go about for painting the rooms. Okay, so any color that you suggest? Uh, another, uh, here another uh, aspect that uh, most people ignore is the color of the floors. Uh, because uh, in floors we can have uh, white marble, mm -hmm. we can have uh, you know, gray nights and paints mm -hmm. and green uh, marbles. There could be wooden floors, which could be dark wood floors, which could be uh, oak floors in light colors. And many a times the kind of wall colors that we choose, uh, it might clash with, with the floor color. The kind of furniture that we are using, the upholstery and the colors of the, the wood might uh, not complement the floor color. So that is another one aspect because floor is a vast area. So whatever color is there on the on the floor, for example, a red color might not go too well with uh, uh, a pink granite or a green marble and uh, with white it would give a different shade altogether. Correct. So that's another important aspect that should be uh, kept in mind. Any color that you suggest for the homes? Uh, red is the color to watch out for. Uh, uh, Indians are getting experimental, they are using old colors, and red is something uh, which is not going to be uh, an in color only for interiors, but in fashion and in accessories and furnishings, we see a lot of red happening. Uh, red is a color which uh, goes with both kinds of settings. It, it uh, matches well with modern contemporary setting as well as traditional settings. Uh, hues from uh, uh, lighter tones like violet goes really good with a clean uh, contemporary look whereas the darker shades like uh, going towards lavender mm -hmm. and going towards dark purples which are more royal in color they they suit all kinds of uh, traditional settings so red is the color to watch out for it this year so you spoke about so many companies having their own colors of the year one such company is pantone which has mentioned that their color of the year is Marcella. Now, could you tell me how and why this color is going to rock 2015? Pantone is a US-based uh, color institute which uh, every mm -hmm. year comes up with all color systems and yeah. advises color companies on the, the colors uh, uh, trends. Uh, they have predicted reddish-brown as the color of the year for 2015, which is uh, named as Marcella. Um, this uh, color is unique in the sense that uh, if I had to say uh, compare it with something, uh, it is something like a round hazel. Okay, so we would see in commercial spaces and residential, uh, residential of course we would see, but commercial and office spaces or even retail spaces, could we see these colors? Yeah, definitely. Why not? Again, as a, as a neutral color, it can be the backdrop to all the kind of interior settings. Whatever be the theme of the interiors, as I said, it's a very versatile color. So it could be uh, uh, the background color uh, in any setting. It could be uh, it could be a pop up color in its darker versions. Yeah, so uh, this is definitely a very very uh, watch out color for 2015. Now talking about the furnitures, like you spoke, you know uh, we should complement the flooring with the colors of the walls. Now does it apply same for the furniture also? First of all, what kind of ambience you are looking at. 
Uh, secondly, the kind of light that you have in the space. Uh, if the space does not get too much of light, dark colors are uh, mm -hmm. a strict no-no. You would like to go with lighter colors. If there's a lot of light available in the space, what is the direction of the light? Mm -hmm. So all these factors uh, uh, really uh, decide the paint choices, the color choices. Uh, there are a lot of metallic finishes, textures, uh, mm. finishes which are now uh, available, which go well with all kinds of uh, settings. Uh, it could be uh, metallic can be part of a contemporary setting. Uh, metallic could be part of uh, in its gold and uh, 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 more rust versions in a traditional setting. Uh, when we are uh, uh, talking of furniture and the wall paints, mm. uh, again, uh, we can have two kinds of uh, you know, arrangements, uh, color palettes. We can carry forward the same color which is there in the walls in our furniture, which would give it a more classic look. Uh, we could have a darker walls uh, with lighter wood furniture, which would be more uh, traditional look. We could have uh, lighter walls and darker furniture, vice versa. Uh, the, uh, the whole idea behind this is that to have one dominating color, which could be either in the furniture, in your furnishing, or on the walls, and the other, uh, the other element play the more uh, connecting or the, the uh, you know the the, the background uh, theme to it. Okay. Time for a short break. You stay with us. Any color you know that best suits a setting like kitchen. First of all, the kind of paint that we use have to be very durable, but uh, very easily maintainable because it's a high usage area. A lot of these, lot of uh, cooking happens there. So. Now let's take this colorful conversation ahead. Talking about the kitchen, any color you know that best suits a setting like kitchen. First of all, the kind of paint that we use have to be very durable, but, uh, very easily maintainable because it's a high usage area. A lot of these, lot of uh, cooking happens there, so they should be easily washable. Uh, in terms of colors and finishes. Uh, one, we are seeing that people are now open to using colors in even the functional areas like kitchen. So cabinets we see nowadays uh, in reds and greens and blues and yellows. So if your cabinetry is in dark color, keep the walls uh, in a neutral color. If your uh, cabinetry is in uh, light wood or the shades of uh, wood or uh, lighter beiges, creams, then you can have dark color on the walls. Uh, that's one way to go. Uh, you can also uh, use uh, your utensils, your crockery, your other accessories in the kitchen to take inspiration from the wall colors. Uh, in terms of colors, uh, we still see muted tones uh, on walls. Uh, one reason is that uh, uh, it being a high utility area, uh, the focus is on work. Uh, so depending upon the kind of light that you're getting there, uh, you can have darker colors on the walls. Uh, Again, keeping one dominant color, uh, one dominant element, which could be walls in dark colors or your cabinets in dark colors. Talking about office spaces, you know, generally these places have very monotonous colors, very dull kind of colors. Now, do you feel there is a need that these places need to be jazzed up so as to, you know, they create a happy or cheerful mood for employees? Color psychology is a known fact. Um, colors are uh, said to be emotion and behavioral. Uh, enhancers that it can uh, increase efficiency uh, in workspaces we are seeing a lot of changes happening uh, workspaces uh, we see is that they use the colors of their uh, logos their brands to create a brand identity yes, yes. so when you enter a reception room the, the colors of the logo and the brand are used in, in, in that room uh, it creates the, the uniqueness of that particular company. The same color is then carried over in the workspaces. Uh, so what generally is the trend is to have a neutral palette because uh, you need your uh, need efficiency from workers. So if you have a softer, calmer, a neutral palette all over, it creates the right kind of ambience, work efficiency. Uh, in terms of colors, which are then introduced on each workstation, in terms of partitions, in terms of uh, fabric on the uh, on the uh, the soft board, so they give the pop up of color to keep the cheerfulness in, in um, the office spaces. In terms of ceilings, we have some colors introduced there. In terms of lighting, we have some uh, 
uh, light fittings can be in a little uh, color. So uh, that is, we are seeing changes happening in terms of workspaces also. Uh, people are introducing colors and it's not no longer the monotonous, boring workspaces. But again, uh, very important workspaces are not defined by the color trends. Uh, they are more dictated by the kind of function they have. So in terms of if it is a healthcare or a cafeteria, a school cafeteria, white is the color to go with because it denotes uh, cleanliness, it denotes uh, health. Uh, yes, in healthcare we do see some colors happening in neutral tones, uh, but again it to just add that pop-up of color, but otherwise uh, general theme is always white. If it is a, a doctor's office, uh, we will see more of muted greens and blues and pages because there you need that calming effect on the people who are coming in. If it is an advertising agency where you need a lot of energy and creativity from people, uh, the cheerful colors, bright saturated colors are to go with. Uh, if it is a very high and luxury product uh, mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. then black and white is the theme because it's very elegant. So uh, workspaces are defined by more by the functions than the trends that are happening. Okay, the colors that we spoke earlier, you know, like Masala, you talk about a shade of blue, a shade of green. Do you think these colors also be, need to be there in office spaces? Yes, definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, black, grays, creams, they have been overused. Yes, uh, now they are on their way out. And uh, the, the space of these colors, these neutral colors, are being taken by these new uh, colors which are being predicted by the company. So when you, have, you say Marcella, the reddish brown blue in various tones can be the background color. Even in, if we are talking about luxury, uh, we can say, uh, have the same uh, reddish brown in a more uh, royal tone to signify uh, class and uh, yes. or we can have it in muted tones in a in a doctor's office again mm -hmm. you know, white lilac is a very muted tone Correct. so uh, yes we will see a lot of these colors happening in workspaces as well so one thing i would like to know are there any colorful accessories that one could use in their homes as well as office spaces puja accessories are a very important part of any interior decor uh, they can enhance the entire ambience they can add color to neutral backgrounds mm -hmm. In a neutral way, they can enhance the color of the darker walls. And when we are talking about accessories, accessories can range from your uh, carpets, your furnishings, your cushions, your bedding, your pillows, uh, in offices from light fittings to plant holders to even your desktop uh, uh, computers as well as pen stands. Uh, all these come in the range of accessories. A uh, very important accessory that I would say here is your area rug. Uh, area rugs can be uh, real mood enhancers in a space. They can, in a contemporary setting where you have a lot of blacks and grays and whites, uh, a red Mexican or an Inca carpet, motif, uh, motif carpets or a Persian carpet, will bring that traditional look as well as color. Uh, similarly, in a very traditional setting, if you have a very geometric pattern kind of an area rug or an abstract uh, texture rug, it will add that subtlety and the modern uh, modernity to that uh, particular space. So area rugs are a very important uh, accessory that one can use in a very fun way. Okay. Another accessory is again, as we spoke about artwork. Artwork can form a real, uh, you know, enhancer of uh, any mm -hmm. uh, space mood or ambience. Flowers. Flowers are a very. Uh, be, uh, in India, we do not uh, use flowers in a way the potential that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, natural flowers like white lilac can be a great. Uh, uh, accessory to a modern interiors. Here I would like to ask you, are there any Indian flowers that one could use for their homes? Yes, of course, for Indians we have chrysanthemums, we have uh, reds and pink roses as well as yellow roses, which will bring that pop of color in a very mm -hmm. neutral setting. Okay. Similarly, uh, if we have orchids, orchids in purples and blues can add uh, a color in a contemporary setting as well as in a very Indian setting. Okay. Uh, in terms of green, we, uh, green has a color. When we you introduce plants in any interior, that green color mm -hmm. can be uh, a natural enhancer of uh, the ambience in a, in a particular uh, uh, setting. Mm -hmm. Again, it can be a modern setting, it can be a traditional setting. Another important uh, you know, this, uh, accessory is your cushions. Okay. Now, cushions can, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, generally just after a year or two when you want to change the, the interiors of your space, 
uh, wall colors will be an expensive way to go. It will take a lot of time. But if you just change the kind of cushions and upholstery, if you have a, a Persian motif or a floral motif or a traditional motif uh, upholstery and mm -hmm. traditional colors, uh, if you just change them into black and mm -hmm. white or beige and grays, right. uh, suddenly you have a contemporary setting with, within right. the same wall colors. Right. So accessories are a very good way of uh, creating new interiors every time. Time for a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. This rainy winter, we have summer. So according to these seasons, do we need to change the color of our homes? Yeah, definitely we can um, introduce different colors as per the seasons. Mm -hmm. We do change our clothes as per the seasons. <laughs> we use different colors as per the seasons, so why not home? Now let's talk more about colors with our guest Sapna. Now I would like to know here is, you know, we have so many changing seasons, specifically in India, we have like three seasons, rainy, winter, we have summer. So according to these seasons, do we need to change the color of our homes? Yeah, definitely we can um, introduce different colors as per the seasons. Mm -hmm. We do change our clothes as per the seasons <laughs> we use different colors as per the season, so why not home or in a workspace? Uh, so interiors can go, you know, change uh, in, uh, the changing colors during different seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, especially for summers, uh, you would like to have themes which remind you of beaches and greenery right. and uh, right. cool breezes. So for that matter, colors like uh, pastels, mm -hmm. blues, lines, uh, you know, uh, light yellows, these are some of the colors greens and beiges and lighter brown shades uh, which mm -hmm. remind you of sand, uh, muted greens which remind you of green tea. These are some of the colors that uh, we can use in our uh, in our interiors. Pastels are a great way to go mm -hmm. for uh, summer uh, interior color palette. Uh, in winters when we need a lot of warmth and coziness, uh, darker uh, saturated colors like reds, uh, uh, browns, ochres are some of the colors uh, that we can use in our interiors. Uh, during uh, rains, when it's, it's mostly gloomy outside, it's cloudy, mm -hmm. we can bring in cheerfulness with the oranges, uh, with the uh, turquoise, and probably the brighter shades of green, which also reminds us of the nature in the spring. Uh, other than uh, the seasons, festivals is also another uh, reason we change our interiors like Diwali we like to go with uh, traditional colors we like to go with ethnic decor uh, during other seasons uh, we uh, like to go you know for uh, muted tones during the next chapter of in Mumbai and police uh, in North so festivals is another uh, reason that we can change our interiors accordingly uh, but paint is a very, again, as I said, it's a, it's a difficult process. You cannot change your wall colors as per season every right. four months. You can't get your entire house repainted. One more last point that I would like to know is that, you know, paints are, you know, you mentioned that hot weathers or extreme weathers are not good for painting your homes. Now, in such cases, if you see, paints are very, uh, a kind of harmful substances that not even for the children but also for the other members of the family could be could prove very harmful uh, according to their health now are there any paints that one should specifically use especially for their homes uh, if you are talking about type, types of paints mm -hmm. uh, in interiors uh, there are three basic kinds of paints that we use mm -hmm. one is the distemper paints which are the most budget friendly paints okay uh, they have lime and chalk as their uh, ingredients along with other pigments etc mm -hmm. Uh, they give a uh, low sheen and uh, uh, they, they are, uh, more, the, the newer versions of this temper paints are much more durable and uh, easily maintainable. Then we have enamel paints which are either oil based or halkite based and uh, they give better coverage. They are more durable, they are easily maintainable, you can wipe them clean. The most expensive kind of paint is the emulsion paints uh, where the emulsifiers are used with the pigments etc. They give much better finish uh, mm -hmm. than the other two categories, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have they are much more durable. You can easily wash the walls and uh, mm -hmm. keep them clean. Right. In terms of finishes, uh, there are different types of finishes one can go with. 
uh, first is the matte finish, uh, yes. where uh, wherein it's a very, uh, if there are imperfections on the walls, mm -hmm. then matte is the way to go because they will not highlight the, the imperfections, the unevenness, and they will hide uh, mm -hmm. your uh, wall uh, uh, imperfections and unevenness. Uh, they give low sheen, they give mm -hmm. more saturated color uh, mm -hmm. effect. There is matte enam enamel, which is uh, more uh, apt for uh, high usage areas, high traffic areas like corridors, your offices, That's your kitchens, because it's uh, it's more uh, easily maintainable than the matte uh, finish. Then you have glossy finish, which is very glossy, which gives a uh, high shine on the on the surface, but they will not hide your, the imperfections of the wall. So oh. your wall surface has to be very perfect for this kind of a paint. Hmm. Uh, the first uh, step in any painting work is you are making your walls, uh, you know, all the unevenness, taking out the unevenness if there are any holes or cracks okay. that need to be filled. So putting is something that is uh, used for that. Then primer coat, uh, which is done on the walls. Uh, primer is very important because uh, uh, that ensures better adherence of paint on your uh, walls. And then finally the paint coats, which uh, most paint companies says three coats is the best way to go. Okay, so you mentioned about indoor air quality. Now one more aspect beyond paints that I would like to know is that is keeping indoor plants, you know, will promote healthy air inside our homes? Yeah, definitely there are a lot of indoor plants uh, which uh, are known uh, to give out more oxygen during night and uh, uh, they are much healthy, uh, you know, they, they help maintain indoor air quality. Uh, in fact, they are a great way to add color to your interiors as well. Uh, first of all, green color, uh, if you want, that is the way to go, you know, you can add plants. Flowering plants uh, will add the particular color, reds or yellows or whites or blues, whatever kind of seasonal mm -hmm. plant. If you get a seasonal plant, so it will give you colors according to the season. That so that's another way of adding color to it. Yeah. And they are, they, as I said, flowers are a great accessory to have, especially in a workspace uh, where uh, you know, uh, you don't have that freedom because of budgetary cons mm -hmm. constraints, etc. to change your accessories often. Mm -hmm. Plants are a great way to, uh, you know, change color schemes during right. different uh, periods of year. Uh, we can have seasonal plants during different mm -hmm. seasons to add that kind of color. And they are a great uh, mood uplifters uh, right. if you just have a green. And uh, another reason is nowadays uh, na nature is, is the theme. Right. So people want to be near the nature and especially even if they are indoors, they would mm -hmm. like to have green uh, around them. Uh, one way to go in workspaces is to have green walls, mm -hmm. uh, which are called vertical gardens. Uh, wherein that on your wall you have the garden, oh. so uh, this is uh, this is another way of adding greenery in a space, oh. and uh, they are definitely very good for your indoor air quality and your uh, health of the occupants as well. I must say that was a really great piece of information, and really thanks for coming on our show, talking so much about colors. Thanks for calling me once again, Peter. <laughs> so this was Sapna who spoke with us about the color trends for interiors in 2015. I hope you liked our colorful conversation. For more information on trends, decor and interiors, stay tuned to Spin TV. Goodbye, take care.